uh, that I am here for this year's convocation. And I would like to thank Honorable Chancellor and the bodies of the university for bestowing me the honorary doctorate. Thank you so much once again for all your blessings. I also know that my speech has been printed and handed over, so it won't be appropriate for me to go through that and uh, uh, read through that. But still, some, some of that I would like to pick from that. I would also like to give some of my life lessons to you, those students and uh, aspiring people. I think that's what a chief guest of an convocation is supposed to do, share his life lessons with you. But before that, it's uh, very important for me to express my congratulations to each one of you, the students specifically, those who got degrees, awards and medals. Also would like to thank the administration, the faculty members, the staff, parents, and everyone who contributed to the development of this university. I think all of you know, getting a degree, being awarded in a convocation like this is a great moment for each one of you. Please rejoice it, enjoy it. I think this is a great story of your life, uh, something that you have traveled. Each one has a different story to tell. And these stories are stories of sacrifices, great accomplishment, disappointments, friendship, and camaraderie. And it's also a recognition of the support of the, your families, your friends and colleagues and teachers along the way. And I would like to request you to take a moment, look back, and thank each one of them who contributed to make you what you are. And this is very important. Give the thanks and appreciation for all those who did something for you on your journey to be here, to be awarded, to be graduated. Thank you so much for them. And I know that uh, if anybody who would like to climb great height in life need to have many, many qualities, it won't just come by one or two. And some of this I would like to tell a little bit in detail. He is to have passion, completely dedicated to whatever you do. And to lead from the front on a 24-hour basis, you need to have a high level of commitment. And this commitment is required during adverse circumstances, not when everything is very good. And also to set higher standards in life, especially the professional life. And you need to have excellence reasonably high levels of excellence, and you are likely to fail many a times, but with the determination that you should never lose the sight, lose the spirit of doing things. Always see the big picture and have focus so that you don't distracted, never get distracted by those things around you. And you need to be a student all through of your life. Learnability is very, very important. And that's not enough. It's also important to have humility, honesty, and integrity. And this is what I'd like to share with you. Because I am coming from ISRO, the space agency. I think all of you are very familiar with that agency and the work that we did. But then way back as a student, uh, Vice Chancellor just mentioned about my father and those interests that he kindled in me in, in learning about space and science. But when I was a young student in school, I was determined to become a doctor. I was really interested in biology. In fact, I happened to be the state first in biology in my 10th standard. But then my passion for biology was taken away by my father himself. He asked me that you must study uh, science and mathematics. But then I realized that mathematics is not a passion for me. But then I was put into that course. And I have been meeting students very often. They say, I like only this subject. And I can't study anything else. But here is a case where I did not like mathematics. I liked biology more than mathematics. But I was put in mathematics course. And if, in fact, I realized that I became an engineer. I had to pursue mathematics. Because without mathematics, there is no engineering. So I tried to develop an interest in that subject, a passion in that subject. And later it helped me a great lot. So number one lesson which I want to tell you that 
Of course, you need to have a passion, identify it. But then circumstances are that in life that you will be put into something else. You will never ever be able to see what you really wanted to do at some times that you will be put into something entirely different. But that should not deter you. That should never take your interest in you. That it is possible for human beings to create a passion and likeness for something that you are actually put into. That's a very important quality that you need to develop. And once you develop that likeness for it, it is possible for you to excel in it. The second lesson which I would like to tell you is that when you go to an institution after your graduation that you are likely to work in some place, maybe an educational institution, maybe a company, maybe a research laboratory, wherever you go, it's very really important to find a mentor. Why is a mentor? Mentor is a new word you know, that you use nowadays, but for us it is gurus, no? We call guru. It's very important to identify someone around you as a guru. Because the life is such that the, the traversities of life are such that, that it is not easily possible for anyone to hide through that without the help of someone. The guru can be your friend, it can be your boss, it can be someone else who will be able to show you the light. But it's very important to find out a guru. And I can tell you in my life, when I joined this row, I was blessed by to have many, many such great people around me. Some of you may be knowing, some of you may not be knowing. The people with great passion, knowledge, and the capability to mentor you, they will all observe you. They will tell you what your weaknesses are many a times. More than your qualities, good qualities, they will tell you, these are your deficiencies. They will tell that occasionally you are actually deviating, you are not going in the right path. They will help you to go to the, find out the right path, the right passion. If it happens to be your immediate boss, nothing like it. I had a boss, uh, his name is Ramakrishnan. Ever since I joined the organization, he was there. He liked me so much. He became later the director of Vikrasara by Space Center, a great propulsion engineer. All along his career, he carried me along with him. Whenever he moved from one place to another, he will tell me, you can transfer from here and come with me. Many a times I get disappointed. But then he told that it is good for you to come with me. And I can tell you that when I was writing my civil service examination, in fact, when I was joining ISRO, the salaries were very low. And many people were leaving the organization. They were resigning and going to US. Many people writing civil service and some of them got IAS and left. And I was also writing. I was also following those paths because the situation was not that good. Our rockets were going into the sea. They were not successful at that point in time. And when these things were going on, Ramakrishnan came and told me, uh, he came to know that I am writing civil service examination. So he came and told, what for you are writing civil service? After all, the work of a civil service officer is to become a clerk of a minister or a PA of a minister. And you are an engineer, you are a scientist. You look at the work that you are doing here. Fantastic work you can never ever do if you become a civil service officer. And he will make sure that, that I am loaded more and more every day. Some more work will be given to me so that I will never get free time to do anything else. He will not give me leave to ensure that I will not have enough time to study. Still I pass my prelims, I wrote my mains, and he will still not give me leave for writing his, you know, going for studies. And when I went and told him that I am not qualified for the interview, he congratulated, congratulations, you are not leaving us. You need mentors like that, because he, because of him, that I am here at this position as a chairman of his secretary of department of space. He took me to become project of GSLA Mar 3. He ensured that I became the project director. He helped me to become the director of the Krasara by Space Center, the seat he adorned. And that's the type of mentorship that you need. And you will always find them. Look for that. The other thing which I would like to tell you is to never ever shun away from responsibilities. You need to prepare for responsibilities. Responsibilities will not come if you chase behind it. But if you prepare, knowing that you have the ability to handle complex situations, you have the knowledge, you have the skill, responsibility will come chasing you. And when it comes, never ever deter to become worried about it, what will happen to you. Take on the responsibilities. Sometimes the uh, will be very difficult. Sometimes it will all, you will always wonder how will I ever accomplish it. But never run away from it. I think it will help you to overcome those challenges and 
know, win ultimately. I think this is very important for many of the people which actually find it difficult to take out responsibility. Small responsibilities. Don't look at that I will become chairman of Expo tomorrow. No, no, I'm not talking about such responsibilities. Responsibilities and organization, you will find it difficult for somebody to handle. Find it very silly sometimes. It may be at organizing some meetings. And you will find it interesting. But you don't take it for some such works which you think that it is very trivial. And there are so many responsibilities that you came from in your career, in life, in families, in, in society, social life, and never ever shunned from this. And each of those responsibilities teach you a great lesson to take you what you will become ultimately. And another lesson which I would like to tell you from my experience is to learn new things every day. I am a mechanical engineer. I joined ISRO as a young mechanical engineer. When I joined, uh, Dr. Nav Ramnathan, you, you may not be knowing him, he is uh, the brother of uh, Sukhamane Chandrasekhar, who was a Nobel laureate. He was there at Vikram Sarabhi Space Center. He interviewed us to decide where each one of us should go, which department we should run for. He asked me what, where you want to work. I, I told him I want to go where there is something happening. So that was my, uh, my request. Then he told me that you should go to PSLP project. That's the place where things are happening. So I went there, I joined and I met Sri Madhav Nair, who was the that time associate project director, and I worked with him. And that took me a career. But the type of work which I got was not at all the top end work. So I was responsible for assembling the rocket. You know, you can understand assembling the rocket is not designing the rocket. It's not the top end of the research work. But I worked for 10 years in that organization, in that department. But I was not working only on that work. While I was working there, I was learning new things, which never, nobody in that group did. I ensured that I knew, learned new, new methods. I became an expert in computers. I did expert in programming. I started doing analysis. And that helped me to move out of it to become a designer. Later, a project director. Though I was a mechanical engineer, I had to study electronics. I had to study chemical engineering, chemical, propulsion, thermal, fluid flow, aerodynamics, control systems. Every day new things were learned. And that's why I took a PhD recently at the age of 60. Because it was a passion which I continued to work on some topics which are of my great interest. It's not to prove that something, but it's a little accepted with yourself that you want to learn new stuff on a continuous basis. This is very important for this new generation of people. Me, like old people, it is not be important. But for people like you, the subject that you have learned today, got graduated, will become irrelevant in very, very short time. In our times, things become irrelevant at a much longer time. But then today, the knowledge is such that new knowledge is created much faster than in the past. And if, you know, if you, none of you know how AI works, I think all of you will become jobless in no time. For me, it is not very important that to learn AI. But for you, it is going to be important. And it is true for people like, you now when I talk, the, talk of the relevance of engineering, if a mechanical engineer doesn't know about electronics engineering, and he cannot perform today, because you look at the area of robotics, it's an integration of mechanical engineering, control engineering, electronics engineering, sensor engineering, all put together. And if you can't understand the interplay between multiple areas, you cannot excel. You, you look at the doctors today. The doctors are more of highly technically skilled people rather than those people who are having knowledge in physiology. They need to know, understand instruments. They should understand sensors. They should understand you know, you know, scanning and the type of computer-aided help methods, maybe the database analysis, pattern recognition, all becomes important part of their knowledge and skills. So you need to learn new things on an everyday basis. But I tell you, even after having all of this, the last of the quality which I mentioned, to be humble, after having acquired the knowledge, after having accomplished great things, to be rooted on your, your, your ground, I think that's very important. Because all what you have learned today is the blessing of so many people. All the knowledge that we have today is that is created by people much before who came here and left. And we are nothing without their blessing. And this is very, very important for all of you. And 
you have been created by the wealth of this nation. The nation has contributed. All that we have in the university is nothing but a, a slice of the nation, our, as our vice chancellor, chancellor has just mentioned. You are committed to that. And you are, you should be thankful to each of those small contributions made by thousands of people to make what you are. You are blessed today to be achieving this position. Let me not prolong with a speech. I would like to conclude in talking about this university as well. In fact, I had the opportunity to go through the accomplishment of this university, the growth of this university, the plans that they have. I think it's really interesting to see and happy to note that the, the, the schools, which are different schools connected to the university is doing exceedingly well. And I'm aware there is sufficient funding that has come to the university to set up new schools, which will define this university's profile much better than the past. And all of you today are proud graduates. And what the university needs to do is to create an engaging environment around the university. It should change the nature of the society what is around it. For example, it is in Goa. The Goa University is the only university that we have here. And this university should interact with the society in a much stronger manner and then change the nature and culture of where it exists. And that is precisely the university is meant for. It's just not for producing graduates. But to engage with everybody. And this engagement today are on different levels. The modern university is engaged with industries. It engages with the society, the research establishments, the schools, the cultural organizations, the political system. I think all of these are important. The university should create a vibrant ecosystem by which engages with the society in much stronger manner. It needs not only the faculty, but also the alumni of its university to come stronger and collected, much stronger connected than the past. I believe that you have a very vibrant alumni society, I believe, the university has. And it should, it should bring more people who have graduated from this university back to the university. I think many of you would have left this university and have no connection to the university. It's very important that you bring back the connection and contribute back to the university in a stronger manner than in the past. It's very, very important. It's equally important for the faculty not to focus just on studies, bringing more graduates, but also work with the stakeholders. The stakeholders includes, as I mentioned, all those people which I mentioned, including the industry, startups, etc., etc. And you must find a way to become entrepreneurs. I think this is also important today. Because the job situation in this country is very, very critical juncture that we have to create more jobs. Some of those announcements that has come in the recent budget speech is, is an indicator of the nature of changes that are required. How to create more mentorships, how to create more employment opportunities. This is also a responsibility of the faculty and the university. And for you people who are graduating today, I think you need to realize that you belong to the upper strata of the university, of the society. And many of us really don't realize that our nation is not that fortunate to have people like Liu in most of the places. And you really belong to the upper strata of the society. And that puts in a certain responsibility on you to contribute to the society back. It's just not your personal growth that you need to be always concerned, you should also be concerned about your contribution to the society. After getting graduated at this place from here, definitely because of your work and your family and parents, but it becomes an important responsibility for you to reflect on it at, at occasional times and make your life path in such a manner that you will be able to find a way to contribute back to the society. Let me not go wrong, I will let me take this op op no, opportunity to thank once again for the invitation that you have given me to be here. Also congratulate each one of you for an exciting and challenging and rewarding journey ahead. And also let me wish all your dreams be fulfilled and strive to bring your benefit of your learning for the betterment of the society and the nation. Make your parents and teachers and all of us proud of your achievements.
thank you so much god bless you